A large chunk of the U.S. is shivering in what meteorologists are calling the coldest temperatures in a generation. Bundle up, because that's where we're starting today's edition of CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus, and I'm thankful to be inside the CNN Center. On Wednesday morning, about 80% of the continental U.S. saw temperatures below freezing. If they all stepped outside at once, more than 224 million people would have felt it. And over the next couple days, temperatures are expected to stay that way for most of the country. In many places, it actually feels colder than what thermometers say it is. That's because of the wind chill, the temperature combined with wind speed. At International Falls, Minnesota, the wind chill registered more than 60 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. That's less than 10 degrees away from an all-time record. Wednesday night, Chicago, Illinois was expected to tie its record of 27 degrees below zero. That's colder than some parts of Antarctica were expected to be. And experts expected that records would be broken from the Midwest to the Northeast to some parts of the South. In the coldest places, we're talking about you guys in Minnesota and Iowa, forecasters say frostbite injuries can occur in just five minutes to exposed skin. The most common places that happens are on the fingers, toes, ears, nose, cheeks, and chin. The National Weather Service is telling people where the wind chill is negative 50 to stay inside. This cold snap has been linked to at least five deaths this week, but forecasters say it should be over by this weekend. Nearly three quarters of the U.S. bracing for bitter cold. Like I'm going into a freezer. Digging out. As life-threatening low temperatures and ferocious winds grip the Midwest. It's hard to take a breath in. It's, it's affecting my lungs a little bit. Slippery roads making travel a nightmare. This dash cam video capturing the treacherous driving conditions in Minnesota, where police say 193 crashes were reported on Tuesday. The wind chill at the Benton, Minnesota airport clocking in at 62 degrees below zero. It's really, really dangerous out right now. This 13 vehicle pileup in Michigan bringing the highway to a standstill for hours. Slow down and leave space between you and the vehicle in front of you and be prepared for whiteout conditions. In Illinois, giant patches of ice blanketing the Chicago River. Residents insisting they're ready for the deep freeze. I'm dressed in layers, so I have two pairs of pants on. But as long as I bundle up, have a hat, have a coat, I think I'll be fine. Dangerously cold air predicted to make temperatures here feel like 50 below. These conditions are and can be life-threatening. Even short periods of exposure to this type of weather can be dangerous. Winds also whipping in North Dakota, where it's expected to be negative 20 degrees. Across the nation, airlines canceling thousands of flights because of the deep freeze. They're putting the de-icer on, and the de-icer froze on the plane. And for Amtrak customers, all Chicago trains suspended. The flames on these tracks, intentional, crews setting them on fire to keep commuter trains going. The weather so cold, the United States Postal Service suspending deliveries in multiple states across the country. There are basically three types of winter precipitation, snow, freezing rain, and sleet. Snow is pretty simple. Basically, the temperature at all levels of the atmosphere are below 32 degrees. When it lands, you have the beautiful white stuff. Where it gets tricky is when you have freezing rain or sleet. And to understand this, you have to go high into the atmosphere. Both sleet and freezing rain start as a snowflake high in the atmosphere. As it makes its descent, they both melt into a raindrop. As it's entering the lower levels of the atmosphere, sleet will refreeze into basically an ice pellet. At this point, freezing rain is still just a raindrop. The difference is, as it gets closer to the surface and makes contact, sleet you will be able to hear. It bounces off of everything because it's that little ice pellet. Freezing rain, though, will freeze on contact, making an icy glaze over everything. The roads, the bridges, your car, even the power lines, making freezing rain one of the most dangerous types of winter precip. But if you're going to have winter precipitation, snow is what everyone hopes for, especially if you're at a place like this. 10 second trivia. What would you most likely find on the surface of the moon? Regolith, dark side, liquid water, or sea of placidity? Regolith, also known as lunar soil or moon dust, is all over the moon. Of 
course, regolith is all over the Earth too, but that's not the kind the European Space Agency wants to start mining. It recently said it was teaming up with the European Aerospace Company to look into mining lunar soil. Why? Lunar regolith, like regolith on Earth, has water and oxygen in it, but being able to mine those elements on the moon could help support a potential base there. And if scientists are also able to extract helium-3, an isotope that's believed to be in lunar soil, they think that could be used to develop rocket fuel on the moon. All that would add up to using the moon as a jumping off point to exploring deeper into space. Scientists hope to get this mission off the ground by the year 2025, but there are some obstacles to overcome. For one thing, the rocket that would carry mining equipment to the moon hasn't been built yet. It's currently under development. Also, the lander that would actually place the equipment on the moon still has to be made. So the European Space Agency is really just taking the first step here to see if mining the moon is possible and if it makes sense in terms of funding and the resources it would require. Still, according to Fortune.com, China and India are also looking into the moon as a possible source of helium-3. So there could be an international competition to mine the moon taking place about 240,000 miles away from it. For decades, the film industries had the technology to alter pictures or sound to make something that never happened look like it really did. A great example is when the movie character Forrest Gump appeared to meet the real-life President Lyndon Johnson. But this wasn't easy to do. It took a lot of time, a lot of skill, a lot of money. Because of advancements in artificial intelligence, though, it's getting easier and cheaper to manipulate audio or video and the government and the military are concerned this could be used to spread false information. Here's a look at what they're doing to separate fact from fiction. Easy to manipulate people's voices? It's actually quite difficult, and people are very good at picking this up. When it does fool people is when it's in a lot of noise. You create a noisy environment where you can't hear things very clearly, then it becomes difficult to tell that this is uh, fake, and that's where you really need these automatic techniques that can learn to ignore the noise. You're building this technology. How would you guys be able to detect us? For anybody that's enrolled, by enrolled we mean we've taught the machine what the person looks like and what they sound like. We use voice recognition combined with this face recognition. Whose woods these are. So in this case, it shows when the face recognizer thinks it knows who this is, Chris in this case and it also shows when it thinks the voice. This is one of your colleagues, Chris? Right. Yes. yes. What if somebody sounds really like Chris? So I've got a case where it's, it's not far off from Chris, and they tried to align the words so that it's similar. Give his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sound. So it recognizes Chris's face, but it recognizes somebody else's voice. So it says, hey, there's an inconsistency here. So here, I show a little bit more about how we track the mouth to check to make sure that the motions of the mouth correspond to the words being spoken. His woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promised us to keep. The line down at the bottom says there's a lot of problem with the lip sync over most of the video. So what if there's a video, it's Chris's real voice, but it's just been cut up to make it look like he said something here they actually said previously? Yeah, so there'd be a change in lip sync, there'd also be some pretty obvious artifacts that even if they aren't obvious to your ear would be obvious in the audio that it's not just a recording it's a, a synthesis one of the big things that i think differentiates what we're doing from from a lot of others is rather than just focusing on a single modality be it imagery or video or audio we're looking at how those interact <laughs> At Gatwick Airport in London, UK, a new type of parking attendant is making headlines for being completely robotic. It's named Stan, it looks a little like a miniature flatbed truck, but when a car is ready to be parked or picked up, Stan shows up, hoists it up like a forklift, and then ferries it to its space. The company that makes the robot says it can create up to 50% more spaces for cars, apparently by parking them closer together. It reportedly comes at a cost of several million dollars, though, so the question will be if airports can stand the fee, and if travelers can stand the wait, if Stan shows up valet. Could mean less parking and less tipping unless the robot starts slipping, and then renters have to find a space to park themselves. Can you stand the puns on CNN 10?